Hi, I'm Zoe with the Calcasieu Parish Public Library, and today I'm going to show you step by step how to paint this simple watercolor design. To do this painting, I'll be using some watercolor paper, a pencil and eraser, children's watercolors, some brushes, paper towels, and a jar of water. First, we'll need to draw our hourglass design. This piece of watercolor paper is about three and a half inches wide and six inches tall, but adjust this design to any size paper you prefer. I just use this ruler to make sure the top and bottom of my hourglass are even and centered, so you can use whatever measurements you like. The top of the hourglass is just a thin oval with a bit of a lip, and the bottom is a very similar shape. Now, I marked the thinnest point of the hourglass with my ruler, and it's these dots here, and what follows is several attempts to draw the curves of the hourglass. There was a decent amount of erasing and adjusting, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I also want to remind you to draw very gently so that the pencil doesn't show through our paint later, and erase any mistakes you make very gently so that we don't damage the surface of the paper. Once I have the general shape of my hourglass finished, I go back over it with an eraser and make the lines a lot lighter because this is going to be the glass in the hourglass and it's not going to have a hard outline. Inside the hourglass, we'll add this small sun in the top portion. And at the bottom, I'm adding this chunk of dirt, curving it a little bit to play into the hourglass theme. And on top of the dirt, I'm going to put a tiny little plant. When this is done, now we're ready to start painting. I'm starting by filling in the very top and very bottom of the hourglass. I'm just using our plain brown here, and after the first coat dries, you can go ahead and do a second just to make that brown a little deeper. This is a good time to remind you that this video is time-lapsed, so go at your own pace, feel free to pause, and let your paint dry in between layers. For the next step, we're going to need to mix colors. So I'm actually going to mix up here on the top of my palette, pull some brown, dab it up here, and clean your brush in between colors. So I'm just mixing some brown and black, and we're going to put it on the lower layer of the top of the hourglass, because I want this area to look like it's a little bit in shadow. We'll add some layers on top of this later, but for now we'll let that dry and turn our focus to the dirt. Ultimately, I want several layers evident in our dirt block down here, and so we're going to start by adding some black closest to the base of the hourglass, and we're going to build upon this later. Instead of refilling my brush, we're going to let the deepest black be on the bottom and let it fade a little bit as we move up to the second layer. And that way, we can clean our brush, take some brown, and put a little layer on top of that. We'll start to see it blending pushing the brown down into the black a little bit. You can see it mixing. And we're going to keep returning to this section and adding layers throughout the painting. But for now, once this is done, we're going to let it dry, and we're going to move on to a different section. For the outline of our hourglass, I'm starting with a little bit of black and then adding a lot of extra water to my palette. I don't want a harsh outline, so I'm really diluting this color. I'm also adding some blue for the top portion of the hourglass. Hopefully it'll feel a little bit like it's reflecting the sky inside of it. And I'm just going to paint along our pencil lines. And I'm only putting this blue on the top section of the hourglass. Because for the bottom, we're going to mix up an entirely different color. We're using the same basic idea. I've got a little bit of black, a lot of water, and a tiny bit of green on my palette, and I'm just coloring in the pencil lines. Now that some of our earlier work is dry, we can revisit it. This area we had painted with brown and black. We're going over it with just a plain coat of brown. Because we put this deeper shade underneath it, this section will still be a little bit darker than the very top of the hourglass, and it'll help us distinguish the two. Now this is going to sound a little odd, but now I'm going to add a base layer of red on the rest of our dirt block. I'm not going to go all the way up to the edge of the dirt, but most of it we're going to fill in with this red. I'm finally ready to start working on the sky. 
For this, I am making a very diluted blue. We're adding just a little blue and then a lot of water. The goal here is to create a gradient and this is gonna be the groundwork for that. I'm gonna start by applying this around our sun, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of white space between the edge of the sun and the blue. Now with the paper towel, we're gonna dab that on the paper and take off most of the color that we just put down. We're gonna use this same technique to fill in the rest of the sky up in the hourglass. If we start with this very light color, it'll be easier to just slowly make certain areas darker later. And remember to leave a little gap in between the sky and the glass. I'm doing something similar for the sun. Just grab a bit of yellow and you don't need to dilute it as much as we did the blue. Just a really wet brush will do. Take that yellow and fill in the sun very quickly. And then just as quick, we're gonna take the paper towel and dab off some of the extra color. We'll let that whole area dry. Now we can take a look at our dirt. That red is dry, so we can go over it with a layer of plain green. I'm gonna push this green down into that brown layer a little bit, and I'm just gonna fill in the rest of this dirt with the plain green. You can see where it's covering the red. The red has sort of made the green a little bit less vibrant. I think the layers in my grass should stand out a little bit more, so we're gonna grab some more brown and just cover this area again, same as we did before. And I'm gonna let that layer dry completely before I come back with a little bit more brown to make this section a little bit deeper. We're gonna push some of the brown up into the green. I want a little bit of a gradient. And then take some more black and just reinforce that deepest layer here. With that, we're done with the dirt, so why don't we take a little bit of this green and just color in our sprout really quick. This little plant is the last thing that we're gonna add to the bottom of the hourglass. Once this is done, this whole section of the painting is complete. And while we let that dry, we're gonna spend the rest of this video trying to complete that sky. I'm gonna start by mixing up a darker blue with a little bit of black and a lot of blue. This is for the corner of the hourglass where it's furthest from the sun. So I'm gonna fill this in a little bit and then, instead of picking up more color, I'm just adding a little bit of water to my brush and sort of dragging out the edge. You can see me do this a second time, going back for some more water to dilute the edges here. And then, we're going to take our paper towel and sort of dab at the edges again, because I don't want the edges to be a harsh line. I still haven't cleaned my brush, so I'm going back in with the color still on it, maybe a little bit more water. I'm sort of smoothing this area back out. To clean up this edge, I wanna make sure that my brush is clean, but still a little bit wet. A clean brush is gonna pick up a little bit of the color and help us transition. I'd like the corner to be a little darker so that our gradient can be more dramatic, so I'm just going over it with a second layer. And you know I think that furthest edge could be darker still, so I'm adding just a touch of black. I'm gonna continue building up layers just like I did the first one either adding down color or gently picking it up with a damp brush. When you're adding layers like this, it's really important to let the painting dry in between each layer. If I didn't let it dry in between layers, my paper would get soggy and it would start to buckle. And if I tried to use a paintbrush to pick up some color, I would end up picking up too much. So be patient and let your painting develop slowly. I've used a clean, wet paintbrush here to pick up a lot of the color that's close to the sun. I'm trying to get a really smooth transition from the bright white near the sun and then the slowly darkening sky. But you can see that there's a really sharp edge right here and I wanna smooth that out a bit. So I'm gonna make a mid-range blue, just blue and a bit of water, and I'm gonna try to even that out. Oh, but here's some technical difficulties. There's a piece of fuzz on the painting and just bear with me while I try to get that out. Oh my goodness. There we go. Now we can get back to adding the blue. I'm just gonna use this plain blue and bring it down towards the sun. I'm actually gonna take it pretty close. I ended up deciding to fill in almost all of the sky with this blue and then to go back to the paper towel trick that we've been using for the whole painting. So I've got the paper towel and I'm just dabbing around the edge here. It looks pretty good, but I do need to soften this point to the right of the sun. I think it was just a little bit too sharp. With that final adjustment, I think my hourglass is finished. So here's a picture of what it looked like once it was completely dry. 
and here's a picture of it next to my first try for comparison. You can tell they're not completely identical, but I think they both turned out alright. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you try it out, feel free to show us your results, and check back each week for more from your public library.